Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Thunder 2004. And in this episode of our fourth season in career mode, we're going to be starting it off with the Daytona 500 at Daytona International Speedway. In the last episode, we had the shootout, and before that, it was the end of our third season, the 2005 one. We won that championship, and we're still in our ride that was given to us after Bill Elliott retired. We're not going to have this one for much longer, but it's nice that we ended the season with it, and we're going to be starting one with the two. Uh, yeah, I love this paint scheme, and I've chosen to use the primary paint scheme, the one that I love so much for this race, and uh, maybe like I'll use a couple of the other ones for a few more races before this contract ends. But uh, this is the big deal reason we're actually even doing a fourth season, even though we just won the championship, is I want to see if I can win the championship without even doing qualifying. Most people, once they win the championship, they're just like, okay, on to the next game, and I think I might even want to do a fifth season, which that will be in the works for a long time, because I want to do it with like 100% lean races and then see if I can win a championship like that because that would be like the whole new just maximum. Uh, well, Jay McMurray won the shootout. I finished in second. He just got a big run on the outside of me and I was trying to block two cars and I couldn't get another run back on him to win the race. So, I mean, I still got prize money like 150000 but that, that kind of sucked. We also don't have any season standings because the season hasn't actually started yet, but go to race weekend. I'm going to choose chassis number 11 because this one is of the same ratings right here as the one that's number 8. So I might as well just choose this one and save this one for North Carolina because I think North Carolina is a track that has a you know very high demand for chassis. And even though it wouldn't be any different which one I choose to be honest, so I don't know. Uh, we'll go to engines and we'll choose this one which is fresh and this body as well is fresh. So I could have had just all fresh equipment in this race. but. Um, it wouldn't have been any different car rating than this, which is 81. So, let's get to the Gatorade duel. Gatorade 125 to determine the starting positions for the Daytona 500. The first race will determine the inside row. The second race determines the outside row. The front row for the Daytona 500 is based off of qualifying time alone, not the 125s. Yeah, that's very well known. I actually had to go into qualifying and qualify like shit to even be able to do the Gatorade 125s. Otherwise, it would just let me start last place. I mean, so... I don't want to start last place in this race, but I do want to do this. I'm a, I'm a hypocrite that my logic makes no sense. We've got Ricky Craven and Robbie Gordon on the front row. And here's the starting lineup. Yeah, the starting lineup. We're going to be starting on the outside of my second thousandth cousin, uh, Ashton Lewis, Quiz Series driver. This is probably like, what is his third time full season? I have the outside lane is stacking up, so I immediately got to get to the bottom. Yeah, we're starting off the season in this ride. Jeff Gordon is starting all the way back here. Well, that's terrible. So I'm just going to try to stay in the draft the best I can. Everything just stacked up in front of me, and I drove into Jeff Gordon. And he blames me for it. I, I'm not supposed to just, like, what is it, scripted? I don't have the script. I don't know what, how the whole Hollywood TV show is supposed to go, man. So now I'm just going to share a draft with Jeff Gordon. Try to get a run underneath him going into turn three. He's going to throw a nasty block. Well, it wasn't that nasty. It wasn't like a, a Matt Kinsey block. It was just a regular Jeff Gordon Wimpy block, and I was able to survive it. Everything sparking up ahead. Yay! Free positions! I just hope I have to draft somebody once I clear all these guards. Not too big of a gap. Um, we've got Elliot Sadler. Will you, will you block me? Will you, will you block me so that I can draft with you? Uh, most people, they don't want someone to actually block them, but right now I could really use someone to connect with the other pack. I mean, we're in 14th. Um, I think what, it's like a 21 car field, well 22 cars because I was on the outside, that means it has to be 22. So with that in mind, uh, as long as I finish like in the top 10, I get to start as if um, it's you're not doing qualifying in like the quick race mode or something. Because whenever you do it in, a, in race now in this game, if you don't qualify, it makes you start in the middle of the field. Which is why whenever I do all the freaking uh, race now episodes, the quick race series, all that stuff, where I'm doing a live stream, I go into qualifying and then purposely wreck my car or some crap because I want to start last and it's like I can't do that unless you suck at qualifying. I don't know why it has to let you start in the middle of the field. Hmm. I guess they, they don't want it to be too hard for you. I want it to be too hard for me because otherwise it's too easy. What the hell is this fancy driver behind me doing? What is he? Oh, he blew up. <laughs> I saw him go off the track and then he went very off the track. Okay then. Hmm. All those tire marks on Elliot Tower come from. And we had a situation earlier, so that might be where those came from. So, well, yeah, it's only a five-lap race. It's supposed to be just a really quick one. In reality, um, 
because this is 10% length race, so it's basically, yeah, it's 50 laps. Uh, 50 times 2 is 100. So 100, whenever it's a 2.5 mile track, would make uh, 250 miles. You split 250 miles and you get 125. That's why it's called the Gatorade 125s. And then these, they, they kind of just, these days they've changed it and it's uh, the Gatorade Duel. And some people call it the Gatorade Duels. It's not the Duels. Why would it be called the Duels? It's the Gatorade Duel. It's two, duel, two races. If it were the Duels, then it'd be multiple two races. And oh my gosh, the top five have abandoned us. They've left us for dead. And Mark Martin's about to do that to us too. Mark Martin, Bill Elliott wouldn't appreciate this. But we're going to get a really good start in this race. I want to see if I can pass Mark Martin. Start even better. Oh, here we come. Mark Martin still blocks like Ryan Newman. And Ryan Newman still races me like Mark Martin. And I I don't even know what this game is for. Aye, aye, aye. Well, he's my ally. He's a really big ally. Was I really sharing draft with him for that long? Or is there something that, that I do something last season and forget about it? Gosh, he's just all the way down to the bottom of the track. I'm going to try passing you on the outside. Am I actually going to do this? I, I'm actually going to do this. Wow. Guys, I actually do it. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I, I, I ask something, and then I say it again because it actually happens. And then I say it again because I'm trying to realize the fact that I did it. And I wind up sounding like a moron. On purpose, because I want you guys to, to get to know me better. We finished in 6th place. That's like a 12th, 11th place. 13th place start in the day 2500. Dylan R. Jr. is going to be starting up front. I think whenever I take my pit stops in this race, I might as well just like not even ever take two tires because we're getting to start all the way up here. So we might as well just kind of put ourselves on the same balance challenge that the AI have. But then you see, I say that and then we just easily pass so many cars in Gator Eagle, allowing us to do whatever the hell we want in day 2500. I don't know, do it. Do whatever we want, but something like that. I've already passed two cars. Uh, that's kind of what you get whenever you start on the inside almost anywhere, though, isn't it? All right, well, we got Jimmy Johnson with us, uh, my big old ally, Tony Stewart's on my outside, but yeah, he's up there or down here, so well, that's a wait for another day to share draft with him and make good friends. I want to see if I can finish this season and like never lose my big ally, Tony Stewart. I'm probably going to make some huge rivals just crashing into people by trying to make my to the field as fast as possible because you know that's going to be necessary. But also I make a bunch of allies just passing people, um, passing so many cars so cleanly. In this case, I should be making a bunch of allies because it's a super speedway. Sharing draft can sometimes help you more than just regular drafting. In other cases, not so much. And right now, I mean, I, I'm trying to pass these guys on the outside, but it's not working for me because for whatever reason, Kurt Busch is slowing down. Oh my gosh, Michael Walter, what you doing? I don't like it. Well, I don't know what it is. I mean, him just simply existing, I don't, I don't even like that. God. <sighs> also, Robbie Gordon started on the pole because that's a thing, and now uh, he's just decided, nope, I don't feel like racing anymore. I'm just going to go to the outside, drop to the back, you know, fuck it. I don't want it. Okay, Robbie Gordon. Well, he was, and then Ricky Rudd, he's like, you know, you're, you're too good for this. Don't do this trying to have Robbie Gordon finish, you know, a little good, strengthen his career a little bit. And then I'm like, fuck that, no. I, I got my own career to worry about, I'm pushing you past him. Okay, and now Robbie Gordon stay on the outside so your, your poor unfortunate soul story can continue. Please. I don't know what the hell this video is right now. I shouldn't have to, like, produce stupid commentary to make it interesting. We're, we're passing freaking 42 cars every race. We're trying to. What you AI all try to block me, and if I don't react to it, then I just go crashing into you and you blame me. Uh, oh, we're up to sixth. Um, I'm still just working with Ricky Rudd. Bobby Labonte is using his NASCAR racer scheme. I believe that's him right here. That, I see that second car ahead of Jeff Green. The yellow bumper. Uh, I like NASCAR racers more than I actually like that paint scheme, to be honest. And the reason why that's probably um, an interesting statement is just because. Most people consider that NASCAR racing, um, the NASCAR racers cartoon was kind of eh. It was just there because NASCAR was trending so much. But me, you know, it, it was to me it was like anime for what if. What if NASCAR racers is my favorite anime? <laughs> I don't 
<laughs> it comes off as more of an anime to me than an actual cartoon, to be honest. I'll call Scooby Doo a cartoon. I ain't. I wouldn't call Ask the Racers. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't call that just a regular cartoon. And we're not really getting there right now. I mean, we're just making a big ally with Ricky Rudd, but uh, I need to take this run somewhere. I need to stick my nose underneath him and make a pass. He's my ally, so he's going to let me fly right past him. And I also was kind of being worried about making Ricky Rudd a 100% ally. I don't want that. I don't want that. That's only for Tony Stewart. And we're passing Bobby Labonte. I should have shared draft with him because I like his paint scheme. Or I like his, his sponsor. I don't know. Yeah, Dale and our junior. Ugh. Oh, gosh. If we got, if we touched each other, if we just graze each other in the slice pit, we get stuck together and we'll bash against that wall hard. So it's a good thing I didn't do that. Well, Kevin Harvick's going down pit road. And I want to go down pit road, too. I could have stayed out to lead a lap. I mean, I'm trying to win a championship year, starting every race in last place. The smartest thing to do would have stayed out and let a lap. But, no, I guess I'm, I'm not really that smart. So we'll get our four tires, our full tank of fuel. Because, uh, yeah, we we'll gonna be doing that for the whole freaking season. So I don't know how that's going to play out going to races like uh, the, the second Daytona race, where I don't have a Gatorade duel, and then the Talladega races. Talladega, I, I should be so concerned about, just because at Talladega, it's... You, you get runs, bigger runs there. It's, it's not as a tougher track whenever it comes to AI. I don't know why Daytona is tougher in here. Don't hit Kevin Harvick. I, I swear my driver almost did. Well, Ricky Rudd beats us off, and uh, they're still right there in front of us. I'm mowing the lawn. Dodge Dealers Lawn Mowing Service. It seems that after pit stops, we have cycled out. You know, still in the top five or whatever. I think we're going to pass Mike Waltrip here. Um, Kevin Harvick is letting off the gas down the back straightaway because he's a moron. Yeah, yeah, we're still in the top five. Bobby Labonte is our leader, but I think he's still going to keep it right here. Uh, I think Kevin Harvick might have a big enough run to pass him on the outside because you know what these AI can do. Well, and then he, he decided to not try passing him, but we keep on working with Kevin Harvick. Oh, okay. I don't know why, but it just started pouring down rain. Like, it was so random. I didn't get no thunder, no nothing. It just freaking... Just a bunch of freaking rain all of a sudden. What the fuck? I don't know. That, that's Louisiana. You still don't even see it coming. Uh, I had Ricky Rudd just checked up because, you know, I'm trying to follow Kevin Harvick, and he probably checked up because of me. And we, yeah, we're still running third. Have ourselves a good little Daytona 500. Uh, I think next time I'm going to stay out to lead a lap. That might not be so easy just because we, we, were, we went with the first people to take a pit stop, so I might not be able to go so far. But um, you know, I honestly wouldn't have to worry about, like, I'm um, staying out to lead a lap kind of thing if I just take the lead or something like that. Just, you know, that basis of that, I have two part cars to pass. If I do that, then yeah. Uh, Kevin Harvick has just took off. I, 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 I'm trying to keep up with him. I've got Tony Stewart pushing me, so that's good. Nice that he made his way to the field a little bit as well. I'm trying to hang on to these guys. I don't know how they got over there. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't have any time to waste, and I guess Tony Stewart as well because the inside's not open to anyone. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to drop him behind. I'm just steering onto the freaking apron. I blame the rain. It's distracted me. But, yeah, it seems after all we are going to get to this alliance up to 100 again. So that is, that's great. Uh, and then they just pull away from me so far. It'd be nice if I just didn't lose the draft of drivers for no reason. Like that, I don't know how the hell it happened with Ricky Rudd earlier, and then it happens with Kevin Harvick right here. Kind of annoying. Because I feel like the game is just putting me at some random disadvantage. Uh, I'm pretty sure the rain isn't that loud in the video versus, you know, as it feels for me in reality. Because the TV's turned down, and for me, it kind of makes it seem as if the rain is the loudest thing. But whenever you're watching the video, the game is much louder. All right now, I'm just sharing draft with Tony Stewart. I mean, you know, for a while I wasn't, but just trying to get somewhere. Like, we. we for a while, I was like, I'll get a run past Kevin Harvick and Bobby Labonte, but then we just didn't. Come on. Come on. You're quite the ally, aren't you? And now, see, Delonar Jr.'s gotten all the way over there, and I mean, I think he's going to remain closer to us, so we should be able to close this gap. Right? Maybe? Well, what I'm going to do is we're just going to keep on sharing draft with some driver and hope that we can close back in on the top three. Before they're too far away. I think Kevin Harvick is starting to pull away from the other two somehow. And uh, number five car, Brian Vickers, who is having his rookie season or whatever. He just overheated and all that. Yeah, fuel tank almost empty. I couldn't go another lap. So, you know, we got to go down pit road. 
I mean, I should just say it earlier and let it lap because you know you can't just assume that you're going to lead lap just during the racing. But this is what I did. Tony Stewart is staying out, and I'm trying to close in on Kevin Harvick going to pit road. Don't speed in though. There we go. That was a great pit road, pit road entry. This freaking rain is making it hard to focus on my damn content. Oh my gosh. Why, why do I have to be so ADD? Like, why can't I just not be diagnosed with that shit? Oh my goodness. Well, if it, it could just be a good pit stop, you know, one of those 14.9 seconds. This is a new pit crew, and a new pit crew could be good, uh, except for the fact that sometimes they're, they're slow from the start. Yeah, 15.3, we're out right behind Kevin Harvick just like last time, so yeah, that, that was acceptable. Okay then, because that's a thing. What? Well, never mind. We ain't closing the gap on anyone because Michael Altrup is just losing his freaking ass into the corner. I, what, what can I? Uh, well, the white flag is out. We did make Michael Waltrip a big ally, so there's that, but him being a moron, that, that kind of stopped us from being able to do anything. And now, now he's blocking me because he's an ally. An ally blocked me in uh, NASCAR Thunder 2004. I don't know. Can I get that huge run that I got on Mark Martin earlier just on Michael Waltrip? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, let's just try it. Carry in the draft. Carry in the draft. Instead of going to the outside, I'll go to the inside because I think that'd be safer. Okay, here we go, here we go. He's running me off the racetrack. Jeez. All right, and this pass is complete. So we are going to finish in the top five in the Daytona 500, so that that's fantastic. Uh, I, I would ask for more, but considering how hard it can be uh, coming to Super Speedway whenever you have to start in last place, um, this might be the only opportunity where I could actually have it that good. I don't know what we're going to do in the Pepsi 400, but Bobby Labonte won the Daytona 500. That's that's amazing. I really think we need to lower expectations whenever it comes to wins this season, just because we're gonna be starting all in the back in every race, just for that you know big old championship challenge. Now I'm bringing it on myself, but I, I don't think we can go out there winning ten races, maybe like five at the most. But uh, we just gotta keep on getting top fives, top tens, um, starting last. That that's an actual hard thing to do. So whenever we come up to a race like Rockingham, Texas, Phoenix, Charlotte, tracks I've been so strong at in the past, maybe Pocono because the AI like to break so hard there and more than usual like those, those are tracks I think we have a really good chance at um, I remember in the past I've gotten a top five at Dover starting in last place there's actually a video of that on my channel somewhere if you look it up uh, yeah when it comes to days on 500 if I start 13th place I've got a good chance of winning and it's just things didn't go my way but yeah super speedway is it's just that much harder but I mean if we had that situation at Talladega I think we have a much better chance and of course the standings right now are going to reflect the results just because of the first race of the season but we have a couple new rookies. We've got Brian Vickers, who I think stopped racing in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series like two years ago or something. I, I don't really hear about him or anything anymore. Maybe he still races, and I don't even know about it. And then we've got Ron Horde, who I think retired a few years ago. I think he also entered the, the Hall of Fame, didn't he, too? Um, he's basically, like, maybe my second favorite truck series driver of all time. Maybe my, my first between Bobby Hamilton. I'm not sure. Like, which, which do y'all like more, Bobby Hamilton and Ron Horde? I don't know. I think I like Ron Hornet more just because he had to deal with Kyle Busch in the, the, that Texas race in like 2011 and that was like the, the like most relatable moment ever. Like, I'm pretty sure he hated him just as much as I, I did at the time. Uh, oh my goodness. Well, let's go to team management. I'm sure we have some kind of work to do. I think we have one race left until the shop edition comes in, the engine shop expansion, to increase our engine power. I mean, golly, I can't increase the power on anything or the, the ratings or stuff like that. I'm overhauling and I ain't getting nowhere. Some of my ratings are... Um, they're they're lower than others, but it's not letting me overhaul that and fix them. It's, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know if I need better builders or what, and I just can't get any. Uh, we got eight races up till this comes in, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this into the shop. Uh, repair it. Now, this is the highest ratings that we have right here, so I don't think it's that big of a deal if you can't overhaul that. But yeah, just for a couple races. And engines. we got one race left until this comes in, so I guess I don't really need this anymore. 8173, this is 8576. This is going to be an 8273. So, yeah, these are the lowest ratings. And if I overhaul it, nothing happens. So, there's no point in having this anymore, really. It just bring me down, I guess. Cell engine at $306,000. So, I basically just got all the money that I spent on the chassis back. That's cool. And then bodies. Bodies is just the freaking worst. Now, look at this 
78 downforce, 76 drafting, and th that's like where it maxes out at. And then what we're building right now and have been building for like the past nine races is not that different. But this right here has been overhauled and crap, and it's better. And I don't understand what the hell is going on right now. What the fuck game? What? I don't. It just doesn't make sense right now. Like my builders just flat out decide they can't build something better. Are they not satisfied with my performance? They don't even want to try to build something better. And the happiness is just going to go down to every race until finally it's like 48 and we lose the contract and get a new ride. Could be Rusty Wallace's two car, could be Terry Labonte's five car, and I'd love to drive that thing. Hopefully it starts out with like a, a 60 happiness rating so that we can actually have a while, have a, a few races racing the darn thing. A 60 happiness rating would give us like, um, I think that would give us like five races because it goes down to every race. Uh, if it starts out like 52 or something like it's done with some sponsors, then yeah, it only lasts like two races. Uh, in some cases, uh, your performance helps you keep the contract even though the happiness is going down. But tomorrow, we're going to North Carolina, The Rock, for the Subway 400, where things actually start getting serious. There's no super speedway. We're starting in last, and we're going to try passing 42 cars, and try not to be too aggressive getting stuck to people and wrecking and stuff, because that that's very possible. Oh, this is going to be the exciting season. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.